everybody. Welcome to the Patty G Show. I am your host, Patty G. This week, we've got not a single business owner, but a double business owner and franchisor for that fact. We've got EK in the house to talk about the recovery and regimen fitness and everything they've got going on from new locations opening up to why he got started in the first place and everything in between. So much to talk about, so much to get to, but before we get to that, I want to give a big, wonderful shout out and thank you to the amazing folks that bring you this show each and every week. Government Taco, Falaya Real Estate, Lakeman's Health Center, Horizon Financial Group, Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge, and you know each and every week McClavey's is dressing us, making us look top of the line, just can't go wrong with it. But without further ado, EK, welcome to the show. Appreciate it. I feel like I should have went to McClavey's first to get some dress going on here, but you know, next <laughs> oh, no, no, time. No. Yeah, next time. Next, next episode, time. part two, part two. Part two, okay. Yeah, but I mean, you've that. got branding on, so you're- Yeah, you're, branding, you're yeah, good. but you know, I don't have quite that swag. But I got to get there. So yeah, next look, time, we'll go ahead of time. Look, we're, we're going to be filming some more Outfit of the Days later this week, so just okay. come along with us uh, that's and, just, and just have them fit you out, and then we'll like, oh, we'll use you as a model. I was going to say, can we do outfit changes and stuff? Absolutely. absolutely, Yeah. So we're at part, we're going to like half this like halfway through and then you're going to go and change and come back, you know. I'm game. (laughs) Sounds good. Perfect, man. So who are you and what the heck do you do? So who am I? It's a great, I've been trying to figure that out pretty much my whole life. But uh, at the end of the day, I'm a, I'm a consummate entrepreneur. Um, I'm somebody that, that uses, I, I like to use the term beginner's mindset. And that's something that's, you know, there's nothing that I visualize that I can't do out there that I can't build a team to help me do. Um, you know, a lot of people always look at it and say, I'm going to start here and you know, here's going to be my ending my whole life. I, I'm starting here and I'm not sure where it's going to end because I always figure once I get to reach one goal, that goal is going to change a little bit. It's going to want to be something different. So I am in i uh, I'm just in constant pursuit of new things. Uh, you know, I try not to suffer the entrepreneur's curse of chasing shiny things. And I did that, did that very early on in my career. And sometimes I still have to, you know, stop myself from doing it. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm somebody that just, I absolutely love business and creating opportunity for new people and opening people's minds up to things I might not have thought about in the past. I, you know, my career has been very, very interesting. I've been, uh, we'll say let go from about 12 different sales positions in my lifetime. Um, I've always been that type of person that, I'm going to get the job done, but I'm going to get it done kind of in my own little way. Um, and so because of that, I learned a lot along the way of, of how to deal with people. Definitely the things to say, the things not to say, but more than anything else, just kind of speak your truth. Be, tell people who you are, what you want, and you're going to find that, that tribe that's around you. So that's in a big nutshell. That's who I am. I love it, man. So speak a little bit more on the beginner mindset. What exactly do you mean by that? So I do a lot of, there's I do a lot of reading. And one of my favorite books is Creativity Inc. And it's the Pixar okay. story. Yep. And you know, they talk about there in the, and having a beginner's mindset. If you're thinking like a kid, I mean, if you, if you've ever tried to argue with a kid that's four or five years old and you tell them, no, it's never an answer. They're always like, why, you know, tell me more. But as an adult, if you tell us, no, we're just like, okay. And then we kind of go along our merry little way. And so when I talk about beginner's mindset, what I mean by that is, there's nothing that you can't accomplish. A lot of people, when they set out on a goal or they set out on a path, they think about all the things that could go wrong. And, mm-hmm. and, and trying to look at all those things that go wrong, it starts to take your path in different ways. And sometimes you might actually begin to follow somebody else's path. And when you're building a brand and building a company, that's not what you want. You know, you got to get, you got to get through yourself. So in the beginner's mindset, it is nothing can go wrong. I'm going to get this out there. And when it does go wrong, I'm going to identify it and say, cool, it's a learning experience. Let me go on to the next thing. So it's really more about just trying to be creative and not putting barriers up before you get started. So yeah. that's drives a lot of people nuts um, sometimes because, you know, you have these big pictures and all these crazy goals you want to reach. It's like, which one do I do first? And, you know, from beginner's mindset, it's I'm going to get to all of these somehow. You know, nothing's going to stop me. So that's that's how I look at it. Yeah, you're not discounting any one particular decision you're going to make before you even make it. You're saying, look, here's the end goal and we're just going to get there. No, but you're, you're not kind of just turning a blind eye saying, no, nothing's ever going to go wrong. You know, something's going to go wrong. Mm -hmm. You're just like, we're just going to deal with it as it comes up and we're not going to prepare, I guess not really saying we're going to prepare for every worst possible outcome. We're going to say, we're always going to prepare for the best. And then when bad things happen, we're just going to kind of deal with it at that point in time. Absolutely. And you know, you, you always, you think you know how you're going to handle the bad things when they do happen. And sometimes what I've found is 
look, even with a beginner's mindset, you, you stress, you know, you always have that stress in the what ifs. And what I found in my career is spending all the time worrying about what can go wrong can be paralyzing. And, you know, you, at the end of the day, you just got to start and you just got to go. And when you're creating something new, there is no, there is no brick wall. There is no finish line. It's just get there. And then what's next. Yeah. So that's, and I, and I love that. And that's where I think, uh, you know, it was difficult in my career to necessarily fit into certain types of employments of saying, Hey, you know, you get here at nine o'clock and you leave at five. That, that never made a lot of sense to me. I was like, so I just work from nine to five. You know, what, what am I doing? <laughs> what, am I doing these outside of that? What, what am I doing here? So, you know, I just, I've always kind of made my own rules and, you know, I, I like to identify that. And, and I understand there's a lot of people that are hundred percent rule followers. And then those are out there that look at my guidelines. Like I think that it was pirates of the Caribbean where Johnny Depp's like, you know, there's not rules, there's guidelines or something like that. That's that's pretty much how I've always operated. And right. It's come back to bite me in the ass a few times, but that is what's helped me get to where I am today. And, you know, when I say where I am today, I still got a long ways to go. But uh, I'm feeling very confident about the path and, and, and what we're doing. And I think for a lot of self-starting entrepreneurs, that initial sense of rule following, rule adhering, you kind of do it to a degree. You know, and then every entrepreneur is going to figure out, I think I can do something better or I think I can figure out a better way to do this. And ultimately, that's what's going to blossom this idea in their head of, oh, I got an idea. I got a concept I want to try out. That's totally different. It's not really following these guidelines as doing something totally different. And then they're going to go off and do it their own very way. So it's like such a entrepreneur spirit born within you of operating outside of the world of rules and regulations <laughs> that other people have put in place to kind of build what you've got today, mm -hmm. which is two separate businesses, but kind of somehow go together. They do. It's, you know, when you look at with regimen fitness, it's the obviously fitness, you know, it's, it's movement based. A lot of people, you know, when they, when they look at fitness, there's still, there's still a question mark of, you know, what is fit? What is healthy? And, you know, with regimen fitness, it's all about movement. It's just, I, I look at movement as medicine, right? And so, We've always had that fitness side. And then when we started the recovery wellness, it was more about what's happening internally. Because a lot of times fitness is always about it's it's vanity versus vitality. I talk about that a lot. You know, most people that come to a health club or that want to get into shape, it's generally because they want to look better and feel better. You know, you want to look better in that mirror naked. That's if you ask a lot of people, that's it. That's what gets them in the gym. But what keeps them there is how they start to feel. And so as I've gotten a little bit older and I like to think a little bit wiser, probably not the case, but I, you know, I like it to be is fitness and that movement's ultra important, but how I'm sleeping, how I'm, you know, what I'm eating, where, where's my mental mind state at? Can I get brain fog cleared? Um, that's become so important in today's society. It's that, it's that state of self care. Right. Um, so, you know, we, we always, so really what we're talking about here is two different brands that focus on self care because if, if you feel better, or you feel like whether it's looking better or feeling better, you're going to automatically put that energy out to those around you and you're, you're going to affect your community. You know, yeah. there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of things out there and, you know, I follow a lot of uh, lately. I fought a lot more of the Tony Robbins, things like that. And, uh, you know, I didn't really understand that early on in my career, but there's a lot of studies and energy and, and energy of people that you put out an energy field of around 15 feet around you. And, you know, sometimes I'm sure you guys have walked into a room and like that guy's just an asshole. And you don't want to get near them. Well, don't be that guy. You know, put that energy out that's a little bit more confident. And you can do that if you look better and feel better. So, yeah. And I think more so feeling better than even looking better. Right? Absolutely. Because if you wake up and you feel great, it doesn't matter what you look like in the mirror. Yes. You're going to have that internal positive feeling throughout the day. That confidence. Yeah. And that, that's what it is. It's all about confidence and whatever it is. Whatever it is that drives you, you just got to find that one little thing and, you know, start to build on it. So how did you get started with Regimen? So with regimen, it was, uh, I've been in fitness my whole life. Um, you know, I've got a, I've got a degree in kinesiology and exercise phys. And the, and the joke in my family was I was a personal trainer at Gold's Gym. And this was, you know, early on in the 2002, you know, about 20 years ago. And so I started off in the gyms doing a lot of personal training. I knew, I knew I didn't want to stay in school long enough to be a physical therapist. I, I loved the idea of it, but I didn't want to be 26 or 28 years old coming out of school. And, you know, I wanted to make, I wanted to make money from the get go. And so I started in the personal training and grew a business that way. Um, I set up personal training companies and around 20 clubs around Atlanta. That's where I'm from originally. And 
after a couple of hard knocks and losing a couple of clubs and not being paid out, just learning the rules of business, I realized I don't know a lot about business. I know a lot about the body, but not a lot about business. So I decided to take a job in the, in the equipment sales industry where I would travel the country and I got to see pretty much how everybody operated in, in every state. And so for me, it was great. It was great to see how different club owners operated, how different states felt about fitness in general. And about 2012, I came across Orange Theory. And that was a, you know, it's a great national brand that's out there. Um, they've done a lot of fantastic things for fitness. So I became a part of that. And I realized real quickly that, you know, I couldn't afford to buy into that franchise. You know, I just, I, I knew what the cost was going to be and I wasn't quite there. And I said, you know what? I kind of see a glass ceiling here. So I want to create something that is almost an evolution of this product. And so I started working in 2015 out of Charleston, South Carolina, licensing a product called Red Zone. And Red Zone was a product that, you know, we had we had the usual stuff, the treadmills, the kettlebells, um, but we brought in things like the boxing bags, battle ropes, and we wanted it to be a, just a big variety. You know, every time you come to work out, it's something a little bit different. You know, you have that heart rate monitor, you get to see your results. And, you know, as I started to grow this Red Zone concept, I actually, I was at a show in uh, California. And so I always had a real job as well. So I always had a real job to support my entrepreneurial habit. Right, that right, makes right, sense, right, you know? right. Um, but uh, I, real job. Real job, yeah. you know, where you know, sales job and things like that. Like, you know, I had responsibilities and people I had to answer to. But, you know, small world, 2017, when I was at a, a trade show in California, I actually met who are now my partners. And so locally, a gentleman named Donnie Gyro and Troy Archer. And yep. so those guys, great guys, you know, I met them in California. Um, they flew me out here and said, look, we love this concept you put together and we want to put it in our clubs out here. And at the time I wasn't a franchise because it takes a, you know, a lot of money, a lot of infrastructure to get there. And I, and I wasn't ready. So I told him, Hey guys, let's license this product out. And so we looked at licensing it out here locally and Donnie and Troy both flew to Charleston um, to meet me down there. And one thing led to another, Donnie agreed to, to back the platform and Regimen was born. And so it came out here in early 2018 we opened our first location up um, at Blue Bonnet. And the same day we opened our very first location of the Regiment brand, we also opened our first franchise in Austin. So we had actually sold the franchise concept before we'd even opened our first real Regiment club. That's so pretty it was, cool. It was pretty cool. It was pretty exciting, pretty scary at the same time. So wait, so how did you sell it? Because generally like for, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but generally like franchisees like to go and see the product mm -hmm. in motion. They like to visit one store, visit another store, see yeah. how other operators function within their own business. What, what, what was your response when someone said, I want to franchise this? Small world, small world okay. of networks. And, and what yeah. I've learned in my career is nothing is more important than your network and your connections. You know, I look early on in my career, I used to be the guy that would stand on the bridge with, I'd hold the kerosene and the matches. And I can't say that's a good thing. I was feisty, right? I think we all are. We have to, you have to be that way at first. But I had grown a lot of really good industry contacts. And so when people had started to see what I was doing with Regimen and, and starting to put out there, because, you know, we went out and did the whole 3D designs. We did everything. We did everything to show people what it was going to be. Um, I had a lot of people that believed in me and called me up and said, hey, you know, we want to do this. I brought a couple key members in to my team to really help grow it. And from that, that's how we really started our first franchisees were people that had known me had known a couple of people on my team and just trusted that process and said, this is going to be done right. You know, you also dangle that carrot of new franchisees of, Hey, we don't, we don't have all the answers guys. So ultimately you're buying into us. We want to see what you do. You know, I love entrepreneurial stores like with McDonald's, you know, the milkshake didn't come from McDonald's. It came from the franchisees, same thing with like the Big Macs and some of the best inventions come from franchisees. Right. So my my philosophy has always been, let's get a corporate store open but let's get franchises open as well so we can learn at, at, on all levels at all times. Yeah, and know where to make some tweaks, where to make Absolutely. some adjustments. And as the product's growing, I mean, if you had a franchise the same time your corporate was open, mm -hmm. y'all are all learning what the actual patrons want, what yes. the customers want at the end of the day, and that's what you got to pivot to. You got to pivot to what they respond to, not necessarily what you drew up in an agreement in a book saying this is going to be a great idea. You're 100, percent and th and that's what you think. And that again, that's the hard part. That's where I always say to franchise, you have to give up a little of that organicness and a little of that granola ness in the sense of you think it's going to be one thing, and by the time you open it up, it becomes something completely different. So you've got to constantly evolve. And 
you got to know that you don't have all the answers. You know, as a franchise or what we've learned early on is we don't have the answer sometimes, you know, is marketing is always a problem. There's always, Oh, something is always, there's always a fire going on yeah. and you just have to learn from that, you know, and just, you just got to kind of put your head down and say, we're going to get through this and figure it out. And so it's, you, we've really learned how to communicate better than anything else. Yeah. Which is huge because your franchisees have all these questions. They expect you to have answers for. Yes. Yep. And so being up front with them, and I'm sure you've had to say many a times, well, this is the first time we've run into this issue. Mm-hmm. Let us think on it. We'll get back to you. And, and people hate that answer. And, you know, and you feel bad because these are people that you're working with. You want that answer right away. And you learn early on as a franchise or sometimes when you give that answer, you're better off just, just like you said, hey, we need about a week here just to really look at this and think through the patterns. Right. So that's, you know, I kind of went roundabout way, but that's ultimately where, you know, Regimen was born out of, I always tell people all the time in my head, it's, I've got like a crazy penguin and a squirrel run around up there. Right. And it's like, you know, are they ever going to talk to each other? Some days they meet in line, but other days it's like, you know, I wake up in the morning with notes everywhere. Right. And so, you know, even talking right now, I go off on a tangent for what I was talking about, but <laughs> that being said with the franchising, it's, it's being creative. It's allowing your franchisees to be creative and it's trying to bring it all back together and all back home because look, people want different things today. You know, what, what's big in New York doesn't necessarily fit in Baton Rouge. So you have to have an assemblance of it. They have to be similar, but still ought to be different. So, and how do you maintain that brand image? I mean, going from zero to two, basically instantaneously Mm -hmm. in very different cities, Baton Rouge compared to Austin are very different cities. How did you, I mean, at the time, did you even know what your brand was going to look like? And then how did you kind of, what, what did you, how did you work through that process of basically figuring out your identity as a company? It's a lot of trial and error. Um, it's a lot of, I always tell everybody, call me at 10 o'clock and I feel like I'm on top of the world. Call me at 10 five and I'm going to be on the edge of the bridge, just trying to figure out, do I want to jump or not? And that was, that's entrepreneurialism. It, it really is. And so when I set out to build this brand, we had standards of what we wanted it to look like, but we also knew that the vision that we had was going to have to be changed and tweaked quite a bit. So I want to say it's just, it's, it's letting go of your vision and allowing other people to help create it. And that's ultimately what a brand is. You know, a lot of people come in and say, this is my brand. I'm not going to deviate from it. And if that works for you, terrific. That's just not how, how I work or how our team works. It was, we're going to offer the best workout around. We want to be a strong community. When people come in, you know, we, we don't want people intimidated and that's very tough. It's, it's extremely tough because how you market could intimidate people, right? You know, what's your imagery out there? And so look, we're five years into it. We're still trying to find our identity that way of who are we really going after here? We know the people that work out love this, but how do you attract the people that don't work out? You know, that what does that, what's that imagery that brings them in? So yeah. To answer your question, it, it's it's very fluid. It's understanding, hey, we want to go ahead and produce the best service, the best programming, and then from there, we're going to figure the colors, the logos, everything else out as we go. Our, our franchisees, not our franchisees, but really our customers, they're going to be the ones that define that product for us, not us. Oh, and and how you get those customers too. Mm-hmm. I mean, what is it, the, the World War II story? They were looking at how do we make sure we, all the planes come back and then look at the ones that got back and where the bullet holes were and said, we need to solidify this, these points. But what they failed to realize was the planes that didn't come back were the ones that got hit everywhere else. Everywhere else. That and so sense. it's like, how do we get everybody else outside of this area to come in and become our new customers? Whereas just looking at, okay, who are, who's, who is our existing customer base and how do we keep them? It's okay. Who are we not reaching? and How do we reach out to those people? But having the ability to recognize that it takes a team so early on to develop something that you just created, Mm -hmm. like that is a huge stepping stone for most entrepreneurs that takes them a long time to get to. That that acceptance of allowing somebody into your baby and helping you change it and mold it is tough. But I mean, you doing it from the get-go has probably led you to where you're at today. I think so. I think it's, look, it's self-awareness and realizing you're not the smartest person in the room. It's your idea and there's, there's dreamers out there, right? It's always like there's a, we look at a tree, there's roots and there's leaves, yep. right? And so I'm that leaf. It's, you know, I'm going to blow everywhere. It's going to be here, there, everywhere else, but I've got to have a team to keep me rooted down. And that's, 
look, sometimes it pisses me off. I'm not going to lie. It does. It's going to bother anybody when, when you go to a team, they don't like your ideas, but you have to just take a step back and say, you know what? I'm one person. I'm pushing this out now to an entire team. They've all got different beliefs. If they can come to a common ground on this, then that answer must be right. Yeah. And so it's, it's leaving your ego at the door, which it's hard to do for everybody at some point in time. But so, and have you had the situation where your team came up with a solution that you either disagreed with or didn't come to initially that you had to go with or. Oh yeah. All the time. I mean, I'll tell you right now, it it probably happens weekly. Um, Especially with, with the new brand, with the covery, because we're learning so much about it and what's happening. I have to rely on my team. You know, I have MDs, I have nurses, then I have the salespeople. And you want to talk about three different distinct patterns of thinking and ways of thinking. It's, it's there. And so, you know, I know what I want in the end, but ultimately I go back to the team and I say, look, this is your idea. I'm going to ride with this idea. And if it doesn't work, I'm not going to point a finger and blame it. We're going to pivot right away. The same way if I give you an idea and say march with it and you do when it doesn't work, same thing. Go back to the drawing board. So it does happen all the time. And I love it to happen because quite frankly, if my team's not coming to me with ideas or disagreeing with me, I'm not doing my job as a leader. And building that culture is hard for most business owners to do, to build the open door policy, the come to me with anything policy, where it's having your employees unafraid to approach you with either an idea or a disagreement, more importantly, a disagreement. Having your employees feel or your team members feel that they can come to you with a disagreement puts you leaps and bounds ahead of the competition because generally it's, here's here's your list of rules, here's your employee code of conduct, here's your code of conduct, mm-hmm. and here's everything you have to abide by. Now get to work as opposed to, hey, we're a fluid brand. We're figuring ourselves out every day yes. as we go. You have an idea, we want to hear, you know? Absolutely. And that it attracts, it's interesting because it attracts a different tribe. You get a, I get a lot of people underneath me that are entrepreneurial. They're like, you know, I've tried this business thing. It didn't quite work out for me, but I don't want to be, I don't want to be at a place where I always have to color inside the box. You know, I want to know some of my ideas are heard. I want to, I, I want to know somebody's going to try some of my things. And, you know, with people like that, 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 that we get on our team, there's always good. And there's always a little bit of difficulty with them as well, because again, that's me. And so I, you have to recognize the business owner. It, it, it sounds trite, but you have to really recognize your weaknesses and you have to embrace them real quick. And I go back to like the Steve Jobs story and everything else where, look, he had a lot of the great ideas. The man probably, I don't know if he could have done any of them himself. You know, some of the ideas I put out there, I can't do myself. I, I sure as hell know I can't do it, but I hope somebody on my team can figure it out. And that's that's what they're there for. Yeah, your, your team is is there to help either support the areas that you don't have the experience in mm-hmm. or provide the ideas and maybe you can execute on them. Exactly. You know, you had a guest on before. It's a Chad Gazzardo. Yep. And Chad does a lot of our, you know, a lot of our build outs and things like that. And I know I've driven that man nuts because when he sits in the room, I'm like, here's what I think I want. You know, it's just blah, 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 blah. And, you know, they always come back and they help. So, again, it's 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 understanding who you have to surround yourself with to, to get your goals met. Yeah. So uh, my dad always told us, you don't have to be the smartest person in the room. You just have to know them. That's it. And get them on your team. Dead on. 100%. 100%. <laughs> make sure they're on your side. So, so long as you know them and they're on yep. your side. You're good to go. You're good to go. You, you can, I agree. And you can maintain that relationship. He was always relationship driven and, like, instilled in us the value of that relationship, whether it's. Mm-hmm a business relationship or an employment relationship, making sure that you're good with people above or below or everybody on the team is able to come to you with anything is so valuable. And as an entrepreneur, you have to figure out how to be that person, how to be that person that allows in those ideas and doesn't shut everybody off. Because as a franchisor, you can. You have the the legal capacity to do so. But like you said, what does that speak of the brand and the image that you're putting out there if you're having people in Baton Rouge operate the exact same way somebody is in New York City. Mm-hmm. Like it's just it's two totally different landscapes. Two different worlds. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's it's having I get a lot of people that argue with me about this and they come in and, and they're experienced franchisors. And I look at it and say, look, you grew your franchise, you know, probably in 2010 or before. It's a different world. I mean, there's franchising in pre social media and then there's franchising in today's times. And that's where, you know, you got to get your ideas out fast before they're even ready. You know, I, the definition of franchising at this point in time to me is exactly what we're doing when it comes to the recovery is we are flying a plane as we assemble it. And that's, that's ultimately what it feels like a lot of these days, because that's the only way to do it. If you wait 
If you wait until you built this perfect mechanism, you're gone. You're going to be in last place. So you got to get it out there and you got to learn quick. Yeah, and make pivotal decisions mm -hmm. on the fly as you're going. Absolutely. You know, but one of my favorite things that people ask, and again, I'm not, I'm not your typical franchisor, um, in the sense of because I, I do like you know looser rules and things like that. But people come to me all the time now, and they're like, "Well, why should I franchise?" And I'm like, "Look, here's the easiest example I can give you: take a half million dollars and put it on your front yard on a pallet on Monday and set it on fire. Come out there again on Tuesday and do the same thing. On Wednesday, maybe you only put two hundred fifty thousand on that pallet because you're getting smarter. You're trying to put quite as much money out there." I said, that's what the franchisor has done. We have made all the mistakes up front, and we continue to make them. So when you buy into our brand, my job is to make sure I steer you not to make the same mistakes we've already made. And we've got that answer for you. And, you know, it drives me nuts when I see franchisors out there that don't want to admit they've made mistakes. It's just like, look, just admit you screwed up or you didn't know the answer. It's fine. People would rather hear that than some BS. Yeah, they would rather be told whenever you give them a no or you give them a direction, they would they would rather hear the why behind. They go back to that kid mindset. Mm -hmm. Well, why? Because we've already done this and we made a mistake and it cost us X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. you, you, can, you can try it on your own dime if you want, but we're telling you this is what's going to happen if you do that because we've already done it ourselves and we've yes. got the battle wounds to show. Exactly. So yeah. what is the covery? So, and I'll finish up with, with Regimen now. We've With Regimen, we continue to grow. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. It's done very well for us. You know, we, we're really proud of that. We actually, we expanded with the third largest global fitness brand called Good Life Fitness into Canada. And so right okay. before, right before COVID hit, we were fortunate to expand our brand through Canada. Um, but when COVID hit, it, it just changed a lot of the dynamics, everything. You know, everyone wants to say COVID changed the world. Well, it did. We know it did. It changed the business world. It changed every, all we approach stuff. At that point in time, I was looking at things like cryotherapy, red lights, you know, I had uh, locally, I, I cramp really badly. And so it doesn't matter if I drink a gallon of water, I'm going to go out front and I'm going to pee out a gallon of water like in two minutes. Right. And so I remember, I remember this day very distinctly. I was here. I had at the time, I, I love Corvette. So I'd had my Corvette and I was sitting out and we had our offices at LSU and I'm sitting there and I'm getting this ab cramp. Right. And I'm like trying to stretch it out. So then all of a sudden as I do that, my hamstring cramps. And so I'm this guy rolling out of his car onto the, rolling out of a Corvette onto the ground in front of a college campus. And I'm like, Oh my God, I must look like I'm a hundred years old right now. And so that day I went to go get an IV and as, as crazy as it sounds, it was life changing. I got that IV. I didn't cramp. I was able to like, get a better night's sleep. I was able to work out, move better. And it got my mind thinking, I was like, it's always been workout, 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 you know, workout five, six, seven days a week, but it was never really take care of your body internally. So the IV thing changed my perception. Then when COVID hit, I was looking at things like IV cryotherapy, um, red light, things like compression, but we saw a huge mental wellness push during COVID. If you look at some of these studies out there, they said that over 25% of healthcare workers have been diagnosed with some type of mental health disorder following COVID because it was just so much pressure on them. Yeah. So ultimately the recovery was born during that time. We looked at it and said, I want to bring a real holistic approach to, to health and wellness. It's going to be a little aesthetics. It's going to be a little athletic recovery, and it's going to be a little longevity and optimization where you might not know everything that's going on in recovery. You might recognize one thing. So my job is to get you in there and say, okay, here's how we're going to build this ice cream sundae. You know, so with recovery now, um, we started our first one in May of 2021 here in Baton Rouge off Corporate Boulevard. Um, we're going to open number 10 up this month. Um, we've had a great run with selling franchises, doing great. Um, but ultimately, recovery is, I, I call it the new medicine. And I, there's a great book out there called Upstream Thinking. And it's, it's what it talks about is if you and I are sitting next to a river, okay, and these kids are flying down it. You know, we're, we're running into the river to pull these kids out. And then we've got one other person with us. That other person's going to go walk up the river. And we're like, where are you going? And they're like, well, I'm going to go figure out who's throwing these damn kids in the river, right? So I'm going to stop the problem. So when you look at that as a country, let's say you have $3. You know, the United States right now is putting about $2.80 into the cure. Pharmaceuticals, things like that. We're only putting about 20 to 25 cents into actually preventing the problem. 
And you look at a lot of these other countries, the Norways, the Swedens of the world that are out there, they've looked at it and said, if we have $3, we're going to put 275 of it into nutrition, exercise, education, housing, to preventative type issues. We're only going to put a little bit towards the cure because if we can prevent it, we're not going to have to worry about curing it as much. And so ultimately that is, that's the vision with covering is when people walk in our door, we want to figure out what's going on with you. you know, is it brain fog? Is it just lack of energy? Is it lack of sex drive? Is it lack of focus? Are you, maybe you're just going out for a weekend bender and you need an IV to get you through it. But we're going to find out what that problem is and we're going to start to address it. So, you know, we've got things at the recovery now that a lot of people are kind of getting aware of. Um, for example, like hyperbarics. Have you, have you ever heard of hyperbaric, you know, Imagine therapy. I have not heard of anything, anything you're about to describe with okay. that recovery. So, and then cut me off here at any time, but this is where it gets really, really interesting. Um, what the recovery is comprised of is it starts with IV infusions. And most of the time people are walking around a little bit dehydrated to begin with. When you're dehydrated, your metabolism's slower, your skin's a little bit drier, it's not quite the same. You do get that brain fog. You're just not, you're not focused like you should be. And so when you come in, it all starts with that IV infusion and we can go ahead and kind of customize bags for people, figure out what's going on and, and, and really get them in a solid direction. Then the add on to that is something called NAD. NAD therapy has been considered the, the miracle molecule right now. And what NAD does is essentially goes in and resets you to cellular structure. So at the end of the day, we have trillions of cells in our bodies. We are just, we're basically balls of energy in cells. That's essentially what we are, okay? And so what's fascinating about NAD is when you see a celebrity going to like Malibu Passages or something like that, they're going to go do pretty much seven days worth of NAD drips. And those NAD drips are going to reset their system. If they have cells that have burnt out because of you know, it's alcohol abuse, drug abuse, or just overall stress, you can turn those cells back on. And that is, it's kind of a way to, it's ultimately anti-aging, but it's just a way to kickstart the energy and, to let your body really absorb everything else you're putting into it. So starts with IV therapy. We have things like NAD to enhance that. Then from there, we move on to a lot of other new therapies. So there's something called cryotherapy, which a lot of people know about in the past. It's where you walk into the freezer and, and, you, know, and you get yep. cold. Heard of that Real one. quick, yeah. <laughs> and so with, with cryo, what's interesting is we were the first to bring in electric cryo. Um, everyone else has these chambers where the head hangs out. It's nitrogen, this and that. With our chamber, you walk into it. And what happens is your body goes into fight or flight. It says, you know, mentally, your body's like, we got to get out of here. We're going to drop dead. So what happens is all the blood from your extremities rushes to your, to your core to protect your vital organs. Only thing that's changing is your skin temperature drops, maybe 20, 40 degrees. But internally, you're not having this major temperature drop. So when you get out of that cryo, it feels like you can be shot out of a cannon. It's, you know, you're going to get dopamine levels. You can get serotonin, serotonin. It's just you get out there and you got major energy real quick because that blood has to recirculate and reoxygenate. So what's interesting about cryotherapy is people use it mainly for pain management. It, it takes, there's something called the vagus nerve, which runs from the neck down the spine. It's your, it's your longest, longest nerve in the body. With cryotherapy, you can help if you've got a bad back or that nerve impingement, you can help actually that, that nerve ending regenerate and reheal. So for a lot of people with lower back pain and issues like that, they'll come in and they'll do cryotherapy and they have, they have freer movement for a couple of hours that starts to compound over time. You know, the other cool thing about cryotherapy is it's big for skin. So we have a lot of ladies that come in that say, Hey, you know, I just, you know, I want to boost my metabolism a little bit. I want to feel a little bit better, but they stay because of the skincare benefits. It basically helps reduce more collagen. It gets rid of fine lines and wrinkles. So it truly is anti-aging. So when people come in the recovery, we really start to walk them down this path of, of absolutely everything that we have. Um, you know, we've got something called PEMF. PEMF is, there's a lot of studies out there on it. Um, one book I would recommend to anybody listening here is the Tony Robbins book called life force. And they talk about all of this stuff and understand it's not Tony Robbins talking about it. It right. is world renowned physicians and, and MDs that are out there studying this stuff. What we're doing at the recovery is really five years ahead of anybody else at this time. So like PEMF, PEMF is a pad that you sit on and you know, you can sit there and you might see people do this cause it's real strong. And you're like, that must be uncomfortable. Like, no, it feels great. Or you can set it at a lower setting. But what PMF does is it's like setting literally jumper cables up to every cell on your body. 
And sounds very safe. It, it actually is really, really <laughs> safe. So here's the interesting part about it. You charge your cell phone every single night. Yeah. Your body is no different, right? You, we run out of these energies. So what PMF does is essentially, again, it's healing you at a cellular level. So it goes to the good cell, skips them. It goes to that injured cell or that sick cell, and it tries to re-energize. The easiest way to look at this is take heart cancer. You don't hear about it. It's rarer than rare. Well, your heart holds a certain charge in it. It's almost like, I believe it's 10,000 volts or something like that. So your heart actually holds it. But your organs don't hold charges like that. And so what happens is as you're basically re-energizing your body, you're essentially telling your cells, let's be more receptive. Let's take all the good stuff in and push all the bad stuff out. It also can keep your pH level at seven or higher. When you fall below a pH level of seven, that's where all autoimmune disease begins, you know, the Crohn's disease, the arthritis, the cancers, everything goes wrong when your body pH drops. That's why people always say drink alkaline water and things like that. So again, with PEMF, just to, it is actually extremely safe. There's a PMF originally was formed for broken bones to help them mend faster. NASA has over 2,000 white paper studies on it. They actually wrap the astronaut suits in PEMF for when they're in space so that their blood flow remains the same. It's, it kind of sounds hippie, granola-ish, where you, know, you always tell people, hey, walk out in the morning in the sun barefoot on the grass. Well, that's the, that's the world. That's natural PEMF from the world. That's what gets us back in tune. So I know it sounds like some crazy stuff, but if you go to a big city, for example, that frequency, you feel it. You feel that energy versus the beach, two totally different things. Well, your body's responding equally. So right. what PEMF does is it kind of, it mimics, it mimics that Earth's gravitational pull. It starts to heal the body internally. It allows for better blood flow. If you put an IV while you're doing PEMF, it's like supercharging the cells. So it's just, you can, honest to God, sit down and I don't want to say fix any problem out there, but you can address a lot of issues that are going on with people. And back to the hyperbaric, Michael Jackson, people used to hear that all the time and they laugh at it. He was in his hyperbaric, Russell Wilson, LeBron James, all of those guys. Hyperbaric forces oxygen into your cells where your lungs end, you know, pretty low in the stomach and it's really hard to get oxygen past there. If you have like uh, inflamed muscles, bad blood flow, again, you've got to get oxygen there to get the cure. So what hyperbaric does is it puts you under pressure when you get inside of it. It's forcing oxygen into those cells. It's crazy how this works. We have people with brain injuries. We have uh, we have two teenagers that come in all the time with, um, I can't think of the name right now. It's uh, not Alzheimer's. Gosh, what is it? What is it? I'm trying to think of uh like autism or something? Autism. There we go. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So they come in with autism. Um, people are running the marathons that just need better recovery, better brain fog to come out. You go in the hyperbaric. Now, what's cool about the hyperbaric is when you're in there, the hyperbaric gets, your body's going to release stem cells from bone marrow. It's going to release stem cells from tissues. And stem cells, we know, are regenerating. You have to have them. So anybody can do hyperbaric and benefit from it. And you go in there for an hour, and it's a pretty relaxing session. And one of my favorite stories is we have a, we have one of our, our favorite people is Mr. Mr. Brown. And Mr. Brown's 82 years old. He was our very first client and came in and his his doctor called me the first day. And I'm like, oh crap. We just opened. Did, am I gonna did I do something wrong? Did you did you injure an 80-year-old? I was like, man? did I injure an 80 year old man? Am I in trouble here? Are we shutting down? And uh his doctor said he needs five days a week at 90 minutes a day of this hyperbaric. And you know, he had had some health issues and a couple of things going on with him. And he had actually, he had had, he was recovering from prostate cancer and internally when they had done some work on him, they had essentially cut his colon and burn it. So he had a lot of internal bleeding. Craziest thing. After four weeks, 90 minutes a day, five days a week, his internal bleeding stopped. His skin lesions totally cleared up and he had lost about 19 pounds. This man hadn't changed his lifestyle at all. Not at all. Still, you know, doing what he did, traveling and very active at his age. Now, his hair is getting the natural color coming back. So this guy comes in every day with his pillow, jumps in the hyperbaric, flirts with the nurses now, and it's just complete change of life. So that's what we're doing with the recovery that's so exciting is if you come to us and say, look, I just, I've had this, these nagging injuries or these problems, chances are we have something that can help. We're not saying we're going to cure anything, yeah, but we are going to help. And that, that's, the, that's, that's what's so cool about recovery. So how did you kind of, figure out all these different 
tools mm-hmm. to put in your tool belt? A lot of study and a lot of reading. Um, I, again, when COVID hit, I took that time to really jump into all of this stuff. You know, I wasn't going to bring hyperbaric in because I thought it was too medical. And you know, I thought it might be too expensive and people wouldn't respond. But when you understand the importance of it in, in an overall platform, it's we're constantly studying and constantly finding new technologies. You know, we've got on the aesthetic side of things, we have something called cryo skin, which there's cool sculpting out there. And it's, it's all the ideas, fat lipolysis. You freeze the fat cells off and you know, you get rid of them. But we do that with cryo skin where people that might, you know, for me, I put my weight on my love handles, for example, those are very, you know, I'm not going to eat perfect. And so it's, it's nice to know that I can cut a little bit of fat down right there. If I want to freeze it off. We also bring something in that's body contouring that, it's really cool. You, you put this magnet on your stomach or you can put it on your glutes if you want like the J-Lo booty, whatever it is. But it's the equivalent to doing around 30,000 crunches in 30 minutes. It sounds like garbage. People are like, I don't believe that. Yeah. We had a lot of the LSU players coming in to use this as rehab. So like after they'd hurt their knee and they couldn't do certain things, I'd actually come in and use this magnets on the quads because it would have the muscle tensions. And so what we found about a lot of these devices is yeah, they're aesthetic, but they're also truly athletic recovery and rehab based. So we are constantly studying to see what's next. And it's it's never going to end because right now what, what's happening in, in our field is the technology is this exponential technologies are amazing. Um, you know, something they talk about in the, the Fountain Life book, um, the Tony Robbins book is they truly believe that over the course of the next, you know, 10 years or so, we're going to be able to almost add 40 to 50 years of life to most people. And, you know, we're talking 60 year olds that can live past a hundred with these exponential technologies, because we're going to, we're going to have much better blood flow. We're going to have better cognitive abilities. All of this technology that's available to us now is it's, it's really truly anti-aging. It's, I don't want to call it anti-aging. It's, it's truly turning the clock back. Anti-aging is where you try to slow the aging process. Right. Some of these technologies literally turn the clock back like stem cells, exosomes, and it's, it's becoming available to, to the general public where it used to just be for athletes and, and Hollywood stars. I was about to say, like, the, the cover is almost this bringing it to the people or bringing it to the mm-hmm. public and making it readily available for what athletes have been using for so many years to get through and play careers that Tom Brady's had yeah. <laughs> over, over the course of, you know, a sport you should stop at a much younger age and you've got people playing well into – an age that no that no one's seen before. So it's like Absolutely. now bringing it to people in their everyday life, saying you can keep doing what you want to do for a lot longer. It's 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 the quality of life that's there. You know, I look at it as one of my favorite sayings is, you know, life is a sport, and it is. So is career. I mean, you got to go, go, go. So you do need to recover like an athlete. And I think a lot of people's mindset is changing, and they're saying, you know, for me, my generation coming up was, you, you'd work. I'd work till midnight and I'd brag about it. And then I get up at 2 a.m. to go back to work and it was brag, brag, brag. Well, how many years did I take off my life there? You know, w- what point was diminishing returns? And ultimately that's why I think the public is starting to come around to is realizing, you know what, if there's technology out there that, that I can sleep better or I can think better and I can perform better, why not? Because we're seeing that people are having to work longer. We're living longer. I mean, do you want to be 85 years old and not be able to move, you know, but uh, what sucks about our society is by the time you get to the point where you've got financial freedom and everything else is you've worn your body and mind out. Yeah. There's absolutely no reason to do that. You should, you should be doing these therapies every day. Yeah. And you should at least be doing something to help yourself out later in the future. You know, it's, it's all about not only your physical, like people talk about their, their financial health, you know, mm-hmm. making sure you've got that longevity set up. But if you can't live and do things to yeah. enjoy what you've built up, it's like, what's the point? There is no point. And that's, you know, it took me a while to realize that. Look, I turned 45 this year and it hit me. I was like, I want, when I go on vacation, I don't want to spend my first two days sleeping because I'm just so damn stressed. I want to get out there and I want to, you know, whether it's mountain climbing, mountain bike, whatever the hell it is, I want to be active as hell when I'm on my vacations and I want to feel good. Most people I know when they go on vacation, they just check out because they're so mentally just done. That's not, that's not, that shouldn't be life. Yeah. And, and so that's what we're trying to get to the public right now with the recovery is we have a solution that look, you might, you might hate your job. You might hate where you're stuck, but damn it, we're going to help you excel at that until you figure out what's next for you. 
Yeah, and maybe it's the fact that you're stuck where you're at because you don't have the energy, Mm -hmm. whether it's after work or before work, to do something you love, whether it's you want to get into running and you want to be able to go run two or three miles before work or you want to walk a half a block, you know, just something to get active before work, but you can't because you don't sleep well. Yes. Or after work, you're so exhausted, you burn out, you don't want to go hang out with people, you don't want to do this, you don't want to do that, and you're at this point where you're just constantly drained and you feel, you're feel you always feeling like you need a recharge or something. It, absolutely. It, it is. And it's Look, I mean, there's a reason sex drives diminish. There's a reason that, you know, just drive in general diminishes. And it's accepted, which I just, I don't understand that. I don't think we should accept that this is our fate. I, I truly believe that, look, I love, you know, I love my Dunkin' Donuts. I love my sugars and my garden. And I'm not willing to necessarily give that up. But will, will I tailor it down some? Absolutely. And can I replace it with some better enhancements for myself? Yes. So, you know, I'm not suggesting people go out there and, you know, eat everything 100% accurate and, you know, sleep your 10 hours a night. That'd be perfect, but it's not reality. 10 hours? Is that required? So, no, you know, I mean, so seven, <laughs> seven or eight's good, but for most people. But, but yeah. I say, what if we get half? If we can get half. If you get five or six, and like I know, you know, as you said, you've got, you know, younger kids at home. So it's like, where do you get those hours of sleep? And what's what's so interesting is we have another technology called brain tap. And it, again, people come in and they laugh their ass off at this. But what brain tap does is it's this, it's this clunky headset you get on and it's these, these blue flashing lights. And what's fascinating is 30% of what you hear comes through your eyes. Wait, say that again. 30% 30% of what what you you hear hear is coming through your vision. Yep. You know, that actually makes a lot of sense. Okay. Continue. And so what this brain tap does, it has these blue flickering lights and people are, you know, you always don't do blue light. Well, there is bad blue light, but there's also good blue light. So what these flickering lights do is your eyes are shut as they make your, they make everything absorb much better in your ears. And so what's going on in your ears is, you have a set of what's called binary beats. Um, There's certain frequencies going on. You'll have this, the voice talking into your right ear and your left ear saying different things. But what it's doing is it's programming your conscious and your subconscious levels, right? And what ultimately this thing does is in 15 to 20 minutes of wearing this is it it raises your HRV and your, your heart rate variability. And so if you can raise your HRV, what you're doing internally is lessening your stress. So what happens is your breathing gets more rhythmic. It gets a little slower. Your, if you're taking an IV or something like that, your body is able to absorb it even better because you're at that, you're at a much more mellow state. But just 15 to 20 minutes of that, what that's going to do is it's like sleeping an extra hour to an hour and a half of deep sleep. And so if, if you think about it, this is where this gets kind of weird and people, I lose a lot of people, but studies are out there. You know, our circadian rhythm, is if you go back to our very beginning of time, we were made to be asleep in the fields from 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock next to the lions and tigers and all that stuff. But that's why everybody gets coffee in the morning and by 2 o'clock you have that crash or you try to get more. Something like this brain tap utilization is allows you to get into almost a meditative state where I'm 2A type to meditate. But this brain tap and this technology allows me to do it. And so we'll have a lot of people doing this. They come in at lunch, they'll do this brain tap, maybe a little bit of PMF to get a recharge and they're going out to, you know, it's, it's like a superhuman protocol type deal. So yeah, it's like they're going out to now yeah, finish the rest of their going day. Out to finish your day, you know, finish it, be on top of it. I use brain tap every night to go to sleep because it puts me in, a, it puts me in a deep, deep sleep. And so that's part of the other cool thing about what we're doing at covering what's available to people out there. Things like the whoop and the aura ring, you know, this is, I wear my aura ring because it tracks exactly how I sleep. And that's, that is important to me because I want to understand, all right, if I eat X, Y, Z before bed and I don't get quite as good as sleep and I'm dragging ass the next day. So if I do, if I change this for this, am I getting better sleep and am I more productive? So we're really, if it gets measured, it gets done. We're really able to start to see that now. Yeah. And I think a lot of the measuring devices that people are using now, whether it's your Apple watch or your whoop ring or Fitbit or whatever brand it is that you're wearing and tracking that data is so powerful now because beforehand you'd wake up and you feel groggy and you're like, well, what did I eat last night? Or is it because I slept bad and you don't know? And now it's like, oh, I know if I tracked my meals and I yeah. tracked this and I tracked that, I know I ate well yesterday and I slept well yesterday. So I don't know if I try to repeat it. Can I build on it? Can I, get better? Can yeah. I get better? You know, can I now go from only being able to sleep and wake up six times? Can I now only wake up four times? 
Can I only wake up three times? Can I wake up none and sleep through the entire night? Having that knowledge and that data is so powerful. It's addictive and it goes a couple of different ways in the sense of like the aura ring, for example, a lot of them measure, you know, how much you're moving. So I didn't realize how much I sit behind my desk during the day sometimes. I mean, I'm just sitting there, whether it's emails, calls or whatever, and I might not move for six or seven hours. And so these things remind you, hey, get up, walk around a little bit. You know, the flip side of that is on weekends when I want to be lazy at home, I take the damn ring off because I don't want it yelling at me, right? So I'm like, <laughs> don't, so, you know, don't try you know, me saying to stand up. <laughs> don't watch this. Don't watch. Don't watch. Or you just sit there and you're so, just like moving, moving your Yeah, so you're just like this. Or I'll go walk to the dumpster real quick and dump something off. Okay, I'm exercise and I'm good. But no, I mean, all this stuff is out there. And I think, I think in general, man, you know, with fitness, people make it too damn complicated. You, you want to go somewhere where you can have a good time. You, you, what we did with the regimen is we took the idea of, you know, we got bright lights in there. It looks like a, it looks like a freaking nightclub or concert hall. I mean, the music is thumping and the whole thing is just mentally pretend you're not even here, right? Just get the workout in, get it good. When it comes to like covery and, and all of these technologies are out there, it's just make one little change, make one little change and start to see how your life's going to improve. Yeah. I think that's, that's what's exciting about this. I think people make it too complicated, um, too intimidated by a lot of it. And what I can say is this, and I hope people that if they've listened to me at this point, which 99% of people have probably tuned me out at this point in time, that's okay. What I would say is, you know, it's just, you've just got to, you got to run towards the things you don't understand. You know, as, as, as human beings, we have a tendency, I don't get that, so I'm going to go the other way. Don't do that. If you, if you question something, run towards it and really figure it out. And look at a lot of stuff we're doing with recovery right now and, and research it. You might laugh a little bit at it, but once you try it, changes your mind yeah so that's it's exciting see i'm one of those weird people in the gym i listen to an audiobook while i work out okay yeah so <laughs> that's, do you, can that's you my that's my that? that's my absor- i do do you really see i'm horrible like i retain a little bit i gotta put it on my phone or write it down so i would i'll retain certain information i won't retain a whole like the whole thing i won't be able to tell you exactly what i just read like for the whole book but yeah. I will be able to retain and pick up. Oh wait, no, I remember hearing this. It depends. Like I'll pick up little snippets from it that I find intriguing or important, or things that I'll make a note of mentally. Like, oh yeah, remember that. That's important or that pertains to me. Mm-hmm. But then the rest of it is, I'll be like, okay, just kind of listening to it there. But I will find myself <laughs> sitting down in between sets or something, and I'll be like, I've been sitting here listening to this book for ten <laughs> minutes. I need to, I need to get back to finishing it. Yeah. If it's something that's really interesting and drawing me in. But yeah, I don't I don't listen to music when I work out. So you don't, and that's when I drive, I start to listen to the audio books a little mm-hmm. more. But, but what kind of books do you listen to though? Is it does it depending on your mood that day? No, so I use so the library's got this this free resource where you can check out digital ebooks, and okay. so I whatever I'll go through the library's list of books and I'll like tag them. So I've got I get my books for the year. I get like uh, I think I try to listen to like twenty or thirty books a year, and I'll listen to those. And it's mostly either business books, sales books, marketing books. Um, and stuff and stuff in that nature, uh, entrepreneur stories, mm-hmm. and those types of books. Not necessarily literal literacy books. I'm not listening to how to become, how to learn how to file a tax return or something. I'm listening to something very, very technical. It's more story driven and re- and some of it's a little bit of analytical uh, driven, such as like Good to Great and then Great Worker. I think is what I'm listening to right now from the people who brought Good to Great okay. out. So stuff kind of like that. It's, it's, it's interesting because to me, there's times I look back at my career when I read and when I don't read and just the motivation I get from reading a lot of those books or hearing things, you know, just like you, I might pick up on one or two things and that's what I really hone in on and, and go try to figure out. Like in college, again, it was, a you know, we celebrated when I got into college because I was not exactly, I went to college to drink beer and play baseball basically was the whole thing. And then somehow I fell into exercise physiology when I was there. But I remember I used to have to take the textbooks and rewrite them. And that's how I, that's how I would learn. So that's what I do with audiobooks. I have to listen to it like five or six times. I make these crazy notes. And that's, but that's, uh, I think they said the average CEO reads like 40 or 50 books a year, which to me is absolutely insane. See, I can't. So if I could listen, my, my goal is to like listen to 20 books because I can't sit and read a book because I'll end up like, it depending on the type of book. I found some books I can read, but other books I like fall asleep halfway through it because yeah. my body will just start to this like, you're constantly just reading this page and you're following this and it's like a trance I get into and then I'll just like fall asleep. Fall out. Yeah. So my thing is like, I like to so to go to sauna. sleep and just read a book, just read a book and you're done. <laughs> so like I have my sauna time, which is like my, you know, my reflective time. And it's so funny cause I'll go from like the books. This is the weirdest thing. People always crack up, but I go from the books to Taylor Swift music. 
And like, cause she is like the way she writes is like reading a book. And so for me, I just go back and forth. It's interesting. Cause I have to have music with a book for me to remember it. Cause I'll try to put like the words I'm learning to like, words in there. yeah. Yep. But I just figured I'd throw that part in there, you know, just for people to be like, yeah, that's, that guy is a little weird. Good for him. Well, and maybe somebody else does the same thing and they, they think it's weird. Now it's like, yeah. well, now it's normal. No, no, it's okay. You're fine <laughs> to do it, man. It's good. Yeah. Okay, EK. So as we wrap up the show, we do like to ask everybody the same set list of questions. Okay. So the first one is, what is something you did as a kid you wish you could still do today? And maybe you can because of the covering. Yeah. You know, I used to, gosh, I'm trying to think what I did as a kid that I would still do today. I would honestly say, man, it's, I miss, I miss just like playing baseball as a kid and having a good time and, you know, just being able to just tune out and just hang out with your teammates. You know, as an adult, I don't have that in my life right now. And so I, I miss the ability to play. And I think that's, uh, that's something that I think every adult should miss a little bit. Like I almost want to go take adult tumbling classes for God's sakes, <laughs> just, just to move again. So I, I also that, and then I miss the, you know, there, there are things that are, that you get fearful of every day, but I miss that. I miss that uh, not knowing what could go wrong sometimes. You know, like I said, I talk about beginner's mindset a lot, but as a kid, you don't think about the bad ever. It doesn't even cross your no. mind. You just go. You want the cookie in the jar. Yeah, you want it, man. You, it doesn't matter what it yeah. takes to get it. So that's that's. I would say that. I wish I could play more as an adult. Yeah, no, I I definitely get that mindless playing. Mm-hmm. So, what are three lessons you've learned along the way? Number one is, say what you want to say. You know, don't try to fit into anybody else's box because you're going to be miserable if you do. Um, second thing I've learned is, you know, this is a rule I follow. If, if one person says you're an asshole, you're whatever. If two people say you are, maybe if three people say you are, you probably are an asshole. And so stay away from that person. And I think the third thing I've or third thing I've learned is we talk a lot about manifestation. You hear that a lot out there, but your thoughts are truly, truly powerful, man. Whatever you whatever you start to think it's going to happen. And so you better, you know, you better snap out of it and be a positive thinker. So that, those are the, the top three things that I've learned in the last couple of years. Oh, those are fantastic. So, um, so being from Atlanta, starting in Charleston, business started in Charleston. Yep. And then moving to Baton Rouge. Mm-hmm. What is something you love about both doing business here and just living here? It's an interesting, interesting part. So I've had, 33 different addresses over the course of the last 10 years. 33? I was on the route of sales. I was a sales guy a long time, 200 nights plus a year. So again, I told you, that was my real job. My real job was sales, 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 going everywhere. Um, So I've lived a lot of places, seen a lot of things. I think about, you know, Baton Rouge, I've gotten to know some really good people. And what's interesting about the the people that I've met that I'm able to hang out with, the Donnies and the Troys and the people I work with is they open their house up to you. They open their life up to you right away. That, that was one of my favorite things about the people that I've met here so far. Um, I'd say the second thing is, is definitely the flooding, the, the rain every time, like yesterday. No, I'm just kidding. That's, that's definitely that's your favorite it. part. That's, Absolutely. That's, that's, that's what it is. <laughs> and the roads. Um, you know, I love, I love the big potholes. But other than that, um, you know, I'm a foodie. And so I love the fact that, like, I love these little places like Simple Joe's that's down the road and like uh, Elsie's breakfast. Pie and stuff. Best like, business breakfast place to go. Man, it's like, the restaurants here are, it's good food, but it's ultimately everyone's casual. Like I said, you know, I know that, you know, you can walk in and anything you want and people aren't judging you, which is cool. That, that's, that's my, probably my second favorite thing about Baton Rouge. Yeah. Everybody's there just to break some bread. We're just there to have a good time. Oh, yeah. That's it. You know, I'm not, a, it's interesting because I've never been a football guy. I've never been any of that stuff, but I've been to a couple of the LSU games. I've started to understand, I've started to understand the culture and why people like it so more. So coming from an outside perspective, it's been very, it's been very interesting. I've learned a lot here. And go check out a women's basketball game. Really? Oh, it crazy? is crazy. Okay. It looking at the game last night. I wish I would have gone because just the environment and the ecosystem that's been created around Kim Mulkey is okay. just nuts. Crazy, crazy. It's, it's. I, I think they're now competing with men's basketball attendance. Really? Oh yeah. It's not something exceeding. New men's basketball attendance and see that's the other thing we have I've learned is i'll take that advice and i'll go you know yeah, i used to just, listen to people advice like, eh. just just go just go once okay it also doesn't hurt that we have a perfect record right now okay well there you go <laughs> that's, that's probably a good thing energy is de- definitely there energy is <laughs> definitely there so for the final question man what can i do to help you 
I love being on this. I mean, I'd be honest, you know, we talked about it. We joked about it earlier that, you know, I tried to get on the show six months ago. Um, I just, I, I, I think it's really cool that, you know, you're promoting local business owners and, you know, you're letting them share their stories and kind of their vision and, you know, the ups and the downs. So honestly, man, just having me on the show was awesome. I would say for, for me personally, I would love it if you would come by, you know, bring your wife by and just check out some of these things and, something you've never done before. I want you to come into recovery and try a couple of things and just see if it sticks and if it feels better. And I think you have an impact on a lot of people out there, people that you talk to, people that listen to you. And for me, it would be a big, be a, an honor if you'd come by and try it out and say, yeah, this, this is what I'm feeling from this. We'll have so. to come out. Maybe we'll get, we'll get our video team together. Maybe we'll do some, we'll do some, uh, a spa session we make it a spa or we'll, we'll do we'll do a spa day at the covery. We've got hydrofacials too. We got all that stuff. We got, I mean, we can, I always tell people, man, you're going to walk in, but you're going to float out. So Ooh, that's what, that's if that's be. not this, if that's not your slogan, that, it needs to be. Actually, I got to trademark that, right? <laughs> yeah, trade, trademark that. I'm trying to trademark a lot walk of things. Walk in, but float that's, out. That's, yeah, that'd be the best one. So, <laughs> Well, thank you, EK, for coming on, man. I appreciate, I appreciate your time. It. I thank you for your understanding in uh, the crazy schedule that is this show. <laughs> Absolutely, man. So it was an honor to be here. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And thank you, everybody else, for watching or listening to the show. I appreciate it. I know the guests do as well. Look, if you're feeling down and out, you're feeling sluggish, you've got any of the symptoms or feelings that EK has described, or maybe you're just curious about some of the stuff that they do, go over there to the recovery and tell them that you heard about them on the Patty G Show, and they're going to take care of you all the way through it. From step one, you're going to walk in and float out. Just remember that. Walk Love in it. and float out. Thank you all so very much for enjoying this latest episode of the Patty G Show. And thank you so very much to the amazing sponsors that bring you the show each and every week. Hear a little bit more about them right now. So you're home for a $399 flat fee with Falaya. No, seriously. Falaya will list your home on the MLS and help you get all the way to the closing table for as little as a $399 flat fee. Our online platform is insanely easy to use and will save you thousands. If you're thinking about selling your home in 2022 and want to keep more of your hard-earned equity in your pocket, you need to check out Falaya. Thank you all so very much for listening to this episode of the Patty G Show brought to you by Government Taco. They're located on the corner of Government Street and Jefferson Highway. Jay is always slinging up a new taco of the month, so if you're a frequenter to Government Taco, let us know in the comments what you thought about this month's taco of the month. If you're not a frequenter, maybe trying out this month's taco might just convert you. Big thanks over to them at Government Taco for making the Patty G Show possible. Imagine taxiing on a plane looking toward the end of the runway. It seems so far away, it's even hard to see it. And that's what the concept of retirement probably felt like when you were in your 20s, 30s, and 40s. Way far in the distance, not visible, or even a concern. But as you turn 50, something happens. Retirement suddenly seems like something real, something not too far away. In your 50s, you are rolling down the runway. Retirement is getting closer and closer, faster and faster, weeks and months zipping by. But are you even ready for a successful takeoff to retirement? Fear not, there's still runway left. But the time is now. Time to make progress and time to get a plan. The Runway Decade will help you get organized, get energized, and give you the direction you need to take off to your desired retirement. The Runway Decade, building a pre-retirement flight plan in your 50s. Thank you to Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge for making this show possible. Nick Pentis is a past guest. We love having him on listening to him talk about the culture they have over at Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge is really an incredible thing to hear. How they treat not only their employees, but every customer that walks through the door. You are more than just a number to them. They're going to give you that white glove concierge service every step of the way. They're going to make you feel like family and take what can be a stressful time in people's life, shopping for a car. They're going to make it so enjoyable and so pleasurable. You're going to want to go back there time and time again for every new vehicle. Thank you so very much for Mercedes-Benz of making this show possible. Thank you to our wonderful sponsor, Lake Men's Health Center with our Lady of the Lake Physicians Group. Guys, I know it's tough to get out and go to the doctor. I know it's challenging to find time in our busy days, but I promise you 
signing up to be a part of this group with Dr. Curtis Chastain and Dr. Tyler Boudreaux. You won't regret it for several reasons, but most of those being the fact of the time it saves, where you're able to get in on the same day, get that appointment done, and spend that time you need to talk with them about what your health goals and concerns are, as well as ensuring that the financial investments you have, you will be able to live out and see those come to fruition. So if you're an investing guy, you know all about and planning for the future and investing in the future. There's no other more important thing to invest in than your health. Make sure you go check them out. Our Lady of the Lake Physicians Group Men's Health Center and tell them Patty G sent you. McClavey's Limited, a proud sponsor of the Patty G Show, has been serving the Baton Rouge area proudly for 40 plus years. Gentlemen and ladies, if you're shopping for your man, there is no other place in the Baton Rouge area to get your clothing, whether it's game day needs, everyday needs, business attire, formal attire, whatever you want. Go over there, see Frank and Ashley. It's a father-daughter duo. They do incredible things in their store. They will outfit you from as simply a shirt that you need for one evening or all the way to a full wardrobe overhaul. They're going to take care of you every step of the way, and be sure and let them know that Patty G Show sent you. Yeah.